Pet, if you're speaking, uh, we I think you're on mute. Oh, hey, sure enough, I've been on mute. Okay, well, in that case, let's try this again. If we have any <laughs> new members who would like to speak up um, and introduce themselves, just say hello, uh, let us know. Uh, if you're using Kubevert, uh, we'd love to hear from you and welcome you. Hi everyone, Dinesh from Sivo. Um, not new to Kubevert, but new to these meetings. Uh, Andrew has been bugging me for about a year now to to make sure I join them. So this is my first one of these meetings. So hi everyone. Very cool. It's awesome to have you. Um, all right, and if. Uh, if anyone doesn't have the agenda already pulled up, I dropped the link in chat. Now is a great time to go ahead and jump in and log your attendance. It is really helpful for us to see that you've uh, been part of the community, have that record of um, activity on our community. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the schedule now and take a look at where we're at. It looks like the Beta zero is coming up. Cool. Heading into next month's chair. Yeah. All right. It looks like we have some items stubbed on the agenda. Uh, keep in mind if you have something that you want to add, this is an open agenda. You are welcome to add items. Uh, as we're going through. Um, if you don't have access, you can get uh, edit access to the document just by joining the Google group and then logging into the document with that same user. Um, and if needed, uh, in a pinch, chat is available so we can get something added to you, uh, to the agenda for you as well. Um, looks like we're starting off with Kubert CI. Uh, Daniel Hiller, are you on? I do not see him. Does anyone want to speak to it? Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, um, there's an issue that we have in one of the providers for Kubernetes CI, so the the 127 provider. Uh, we see there's there's an issue deleting some of the test namespaces. So this is causing a delay in delivering the 127 provider. So currently the periodics are failing with this as well. So the periodics are failing with the name space deletion issue. And I think Daniel has raised an issue there under Kubert, so the 9725 issue. Uh, let's track it. Cool. Good to know. Thank you, Brian. And it looks like policy. Are you on to talk about the beta coming up? Or does anyone want to speak to that one? I don't know what exactly he was bringing up, but it could just be that we are yeah. tagging there. Could have we just have... been a... Yeah, we've got some open issues in. Yep. Is that the um, version one? Yep, it sure is. And um, also just that I think in one month's time, or just slightly less than one month's time, we'll have the Qbert feature freeze. So it's always good yep. to be aware of. Um, and yeah, on the on the subject of the V1 GA release, um, if you have a name, your name against any of those points, and I'm one of those people, um, yes, can we can we please start getting them um, complete so we can have a V1 release? Cool, that's exciting. And then next up is is you, Andrew. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, KubeCon North America 23 CFP is open. It is open until June 18th. So you got a little bit more than a month. Um, it'll be in Chicago this year in November 6th to 9th. The details are there. The, those two links go to the Linux Foundation page and the submission page, respectively. I've updated the community events wiki as well. So you can find the info on there. Um, as always, please reach out if you would like assistance writing a proposal or if you've got an idea and you're not sure if it's worth um, making a proposal for, please reach out. Um, it's um, part of what we what I do here, what we do here. Um, it was really awesome uh, to have so many people at uh, KubeCon Europe in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago, especially having like a variety of Kubert talks. And I think um, it's really helpful for the project to have a number of people there representing Kubert as a project, as a community. Um, and I think because of that presence, we had um, tremendous foot traffic to the Kubert kiosk. A lot of people not necessarily using Kubert, but very, very interested and in investigating using Kubert. Um, and hopefully we can maintain that. Uh, positive pressure going forward. Um, I've got a ditto there as well. For if you have an idea for a ContribFest, so ContribFest is an hour and a half long hackathon that they run at KubeCon. Um, the competition is pretty fierce. Um, we didn't, we got denied at the uh, last KubeCon. Um, and yeah, if, you, if you've got a good, strong idea for, basically the, the general premise that we want to go for is that we should get to about you know, 70 to 80% completion within that 90 minutes, depending on, on who's there. So enough to get some something produced, but also a little bit left over to leave people wanting. Um, we'll also put forward a maintainer talk. So if anyone has a really great idea um, of something we should be talking about, V1 springs to mind. But if anyone else has any other ideas, uh, I am all ears. Um, and yeah, I, I strongly urge you to submit and I strongly urge you to reach out if you're vaguely interested in submitting, you're not entirely sure whether or not you should, because um, I will give you a lot of encouragement. Um, and my final point there is uh, happy to say that we have a project accept accepted into the Google Summer of Code. Um, I don't think he's on the call, but welcome, Natish. Um, and thank you very much for Alicia and Lubo, who are our mentors, for all the tremendous work you've done so far. The project, I've got it linked there. Well, I've got the original um, issue that we created at the start of the uh, contribution phase, um, generating second profiles. Um, so yeah, I, I hope to see uh, Natish in the community. You'll, you'll probably see him on Slack and the mailing list, potentially asking questions. Um, yeah, uh, that's it from me. Thank you, Andrew. You're always keeping everything up in the air somehow. Um, jumping ahead, unless there are any last minute additions to open floor or agenda, we'll uh, take a look at some of the PRs, mailing list items, and bugs. Let's see what we got. See, this was live migration with dedicated CPUs. Oof, that's what it's going to be. Yesterday. I will have a look. That should be easy one. What was that? I was just mentioning that I will have a look. Uh, that should be easy one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Label or skip note annotation.
Anyone have a clue on this one? I haven't used skip node. We are mainly using it for tests. We need to have a quick look if that's something we want to expose for the users, but maybe we do. Is there a response I can drop on this one? Yeah, I will respond. What is that? I will respond. Oh, OK, great. Thanks. Sorry, I'm just loading you up today. Yeah, I'm a little bit bored, so that's OK. <laughs> OK. All right. Let's take a look at conversation about user guide. This. I can give a quick uh, TLDR Sh on this one. Sure, that'd be great. Um, hopefully, everyone has seen uh, the recent um, build change to the user guide um, that is shown into thrown into sharp relief um, the fact that a lot of the content in the user guide is split between um, sections called operations and virtual machines um, which doesn't necessarily make sense um, considering how much content we have within those so um, channels putting forth can um, people have ideas have some input um, on how we can more logically break these down into things like, you know, we've already got quick starts so they're getting started, but, you know, if we've got like a, a potential storage section, a networking section, those kinds of things. Um, yeah, so obviously I think people know that Docs is close to my heart. So if people would like to weigh in on that uh, thread, that would be wonderful. Cool. I might take a look at that. Okay. See. And I will say that I, I really like uh, Petter's suggestion of how to handle this going forward. I, I think unless there are any other ideas that come forward, uh, his is a great path to start with. Jumping to... Design proposal for a monitoring code refactor. Cool. So if anyone's able to jump in on that. Looks like they're definitely looking for some feedback. And last but not least, we have some bugs to pull up. Non-elected vert operator has Qvert work queue depth. What? I wonder if, it, if this is actual problem. Um, the thing being the queue can have some items, but the, the, the key point is that the, 
the controller is not working on the queue. At least that's my opinion of this. That's cool. So I learned some things just reading the, the issue. Um, anyone have tips on a response? Maybe he can check if that behavior is same for other controllers. So for example, weird, con weird control. Uh, okay. All right, extra metrics means failed moment, linter. Hey, linting fails. I think this is a new linter are adding and just um, tracking the issues they need to tackle. Okay. So nothing There's to do here. Nothing to do, okay. Span docs for VM export with ingress setup guide. Hmm. It sounds like a request for over documentation, but I guess if we had like a copy paste nginx example, would that support uh, plain HTTP that we don't have to take on the work of certs? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea here is um, at least in CDI, for example, we have a doc on how to um, expose our upload proxy service, and we need a similar documentation here that gives you yeah, an example in Nginx config. Um, I don't, yeah, certificate stuff will definitely be beyond the scope of that. Okay. Um... You can assign it to me. 
M. Hendricks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And with that, wow, we just cut through a full agenda in 25 minutes. Nicely done. Well, any last minute ads or any informal call outs, kudos, or anything like that? Going once. Uh, going. I, uh, this is Bihari. Sorry. So, uh, like, uh, I was talking about the uh, Behost user interface design proposal, like from a uh, past one week. So, in the comments, I have seen that uh, we are uh, so to, uh, we are trying to implement the addition of the uh, interface as part of plugin. So, I want to check if that is already implemented or uh, is it going in a proposal? Can I get any uh, information on that? I wasn't following which proposal specifically. So it is uh, proposal number 218. Hi, Vyari. Uh, um, can you rephrase a bit your, um, uh, your questions? What do you mean with uh, is already implemented? What exactly do you mean with that? Uh, so in one of the comment, Mike, uh, Miguel has commented that uh, in future, Qbert is trying to decouple the interface edition, like binding or uh, adding any interface uh, so that Qbert doesn't have to maintain all the interfaces and mm -hmm. the end users can uh, handle those as a plugin. To my knowledge, that hasn't been started yet. Do we have somebody from networking team? We have a ad. Uh, so no, the, there are talks, internal talks uh, to raise ideas how to do it, but nothing, uh, there is nothing yet that, that we can share or, or put on paper yet. We are, in general, the network team is, uh, is working now, the SIG is working now on, uh, on the hot plug things, which are took priority and I think after that we will have time to to talk about this uh, or invest more time on this one. Okay. And hopefully it will happen in the next like like okay. in, in the next two or three weeks. This is where I think most of the attention will be for the hot plug, and and uh, after that I think. We have more time to to look into the plugin part, but the but the discussion can continue. I mean, if people have uh, ideas, or it's fine. Okay, okay. Yeah, and... I, I think here there are actually two issues. Um, I mean, two different problems to to solve. I think one is um, adding new type networking types, but I think generally it's true for storage also and i think that's what ted mentioned um so this is basically extension of qvert api um so that's the first part and the second part is actually the real implementation so how you bring for example the um dpdk, DPDK socket inside beer launcher and how you pass those information and that has been mostly the um, the comments that cover the device plugin uh, framework. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so I think at least if you if you have a prototype or a POC that is working with uh, with uh, mounting the socket inside the counter, that will be already. Uh, so, uh, like the proposal I have made, uh, the proposal I made. So we are using the current solution in our product. Uh, there we are able to deploy DPDK VMs and send traffic through that. And we are also deploying the, uh, similarly the same VMs uh, as a production cluster with DPDK support. 
So I thought uh, maybe I can uh, add the same support to Qbert so that uh, it can be used by any DBDK like uh, VPP or DBDK uh, applications. So I think so for that, for that, the technical parts of uh, the proposal, I think you did got some feedbacks, <laughs> some some about warnings about uh, leaks. Yeah. Uh, so. Some about question uh, asking. Uh, I mean, for example, I, I'm not uh, that. It, it will take me some time to to understand the the details with uh, the socket and who is creating that and all the, the the small details that exist there. But there are some points that uh, others have experience with. With, for example, when mounting something, mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's not always easy to unmount it, or no one can assure it's unmountable. So the device plugin is another option. So the question is, was this explore, it explored? Uh, maybe you can can look into it. We will also try when we review it. We'll also try to look into it. Uh, That's sure. my, our technical. Uh, I think one of most of the technical points. You you can still continue the discussion there. Yeah, exactly. That was also my point. Uh... We need to to know how to solve this, uh, and then uh, we can follow up when networking team has more time for uh, extending the APIs. But uh, right now, I think it's important to to solve at least the backend part. Okay. Is it clear or? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, uh, sure, Alice. I mean, for the API, you could uh, maybe experiment it with a custom webhook or uh, webhook. No, it's more for the for the pod. I'm guessing yeah. this is what they are what what they are doing today, right? Because you need to configure the the domain. So you are. I'm guessing you're using a sidecar or something like that for a webhook. Can the webhook uh, modify the VMI? Like we have, I think, I think uh, we have some, uh, it's not the webhook uh, from the admitter webhook. Uh, there is a, like, there is an integration point inside the, when create, when create, when working with the domain. So there is a hook from there. But I don't know how they they solve it. There is there is something like that that was added like a few years ago, just to allow uh, mutating the the DOM XML with as you want as you want. Yeah, I hope at least that uh, can unblock you to continue working. I, we can leave the keyword API extension maybe for a second time, but the backend part is, uh, is also important. If there's nothing else, we will go ahead and read. Thank you all for your participation. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Thanks, Kat. Thank you. Bye. Bye.